Now let's distinguish between electrolytes and non-electrolytes. So conducting electricity, if you have an electrolyte, it is able to conduct an electric current. For example, ionic substances like sodium chloride, if you dissolve them in water, then it'll conduct electricity and this is known as an electrolyte. So you'll notice this is salt water and it is completing the circuit, lighting up the light bulb, which makes it an electrolyte. So salt water is an example of an electrolyte. A non-electrolyte is a solution that does not conduct an electric current. So if you have a molecular or covalent compound, the opposite of ionic, then the substances dissolved in water will not conduct electricity. So sugar water, sugar is covalent or molecular, and so you'll notice it does not light the light bulb, which makes it a non-electrolyte. So let's consider each of the beakers in this diagram. Notice this one, the light bulb is unlit. And then inside the beaker, look, these are all molecular compounds, nothing with a positive or a negative charge. So there are no ions, which makes this a non-electrolyte, which means you have an unlit light bulb. If you have a brightly lit light bulb, then look in the beaker, all ions, everything's a positive or negative ion. And so you have 100% ions, it's a strong electrolyte because everything in the beaker is an ion and you have a bright light bulb. If you have a dimly lit light bulb, then we have a few ions, not 100%, but we have some. So notice in the beaker, that's a positive ion, that's a negative, but everything else is not an ion. It's a molecular compound. So if you only have partial ions, then you have a weak electrolyte, but it is still kind of an electrolyte and you're gonna have a dim light bulb. So now we're going to do a little demonstration of each of the following and you'll determine what happened to the light bulb and does that make it an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte. All right, here are our demonstrations. First we have some distilled water and you'll notice that the distilled water does not light the light bulb. So it has no ions, so it is a non-electrolyte. Next we have tap water and the tap water also does not light the light bulb, so that is a non-electrolyte. Next we have hydrogen peroxide, and because that is a covalent compound, it also does not light the light bulb. Next we have some Gatorade, that does not light the light bulb, so it is a non-electrolyte. Next we have some solid salt, that's solid salt, and you'll notice that that does not light the light bulb. So solid salt will not. I'm gonna clean the salt off with some water, and you'll notice that as it dissolves into the water, there might be too much water in this one. So let's do salt water. So this is a saturated solution of salt water even has extras at the bottom, and oh wow, that is very bright. So this is a strong electrolyte because of how bright it is. Clean that off a little bit. Okay, next is our sugar water. So sugar water, and sugar is covalent, so it is not an electrolyte, does not light the light bulb. Next we have some baking soda in water. I have it saturated. You can see there's extra settled at the bottom and that lights the light bulb pretty bright as well. So that is a strong electrolyte. Next is some vinegar with water and when we place that we actually get a dim light bulb. So this is a weak electrolyte. It's quite dim. It's lit but just very dimly. Okay. Next we have some Monster, which is a, an energy drink, and it does not light the light bulb, so it is a non-electrolyte. And then finally, we have a little bit of Sprite, which is a carbonated beverage, basically sugar water and carbon dioxide, and since the sugar water earlier didn't light it up, neither will the Sprite. So now let's look at each of these particle diagrams and describe, is it an electrolyte or a non-electrolyte? And if it is an electrolyte, is it strong or is it weak? 
So if you look at this box, the AX, we have all molecules, no positives or negatives. Notice how here we have a positive marked, right? But there's no positive and negatives here. So this is going to be a non-electrolyte. For this one, we have three molecules that don't have positive and negative charges, but here we have one positive and one negative. So this is going to be a weak electrolyte. For this one, because it's all positive and negative ions and no molecules, this is going to be a strong electrolyte. So if we look at the HX, notice we have one, two, three, four of these are positive and negative ions, and one, two, three, four, five, six of them are molecules. So we only have some ions, not completely ions, and so this would be a weak electrolyte. In here, we have 100% ions. Everything is a positive or negative ion, so that makes this a strong electrolyte. And then this one, we have some ions, and then we have molecules. So since it's not all ions, this will also be a weak electrolyte.